The study basically says after a person is exposed to ads that promote body acceptance using larger size models, people are more likely to make unhealthier decisions. So eating more, eating foods with more calories, becoming less motivated to work out, and even less likely to want to have their tax dollars spent on obesity-related services. Why? The ads make it seem more socially acceptable to carry extra weight. Now, these are the types of ads we're talking about. Keep in mind, the modeling industry, anybody above a size 8 is considered plus-sized. And in this study, the researchers were looking at women who were classified as medically obese. They used images of someone who might be about 5'2 and a size 16. Professor Brent McFerrin at SFU's Beatty School of Business co-wrote the study. He says there have been plenty of studies about the negative effects of ads promoting thin models, but there seems to have been universal acceptance of ads promoting body acceptance using women who are plus sized. Just because you're not stigmatizing larger bodies doesn't, does it necessarily follow that you should be promoting or advocating uh, larger bodies across the board, you know, unambiguously, and we show one consequence to doing that. The professor recommends that more research be done as to what advertisers should do, but he's not recommending that advertisers stop using plus-size women in their ads. Instead, he suggests ads with a diversity of body shapes and sizes. The usage of, 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 of a range of body types is probably a good thing, so long as we're not holding up any one of those bodies, be it large, be it small, and saying this is what you should strive to, or this is good. Because often I think when you're saying this is good, it implies something else is not good or less good. So ads with more real women and less focus on what's considered an acceptable body type.